Having just covered slice time correction, we're now ready to move on to the step of volume registration. Volume registration refers to aligning all of the volumes within the functional runs to a base reference volume. This base volume, it does not move. It's stationary. It's, it's arbitrary, but we select one to be a stationary reference image. The idea is throughout all the acquisitions, all the other volumes throughout the experiment, the subject is never perfectly still. They move their head a little bit, they can translate it in the X, Y, and Z directions, or they can rotate it in the roll, pitch, and yaw around those axes. So volume registration will calculate how far the subject moves in all those directions, and then attempt to correct for that by moving all of the other volumes to the reference volume. In our proc script, it's taken care of by this command called 3D Volreg, and it's down here. The important parts are this base option, which specifies here, at least in this example. We are going to use the third volume of this T-shift output from run one as our reference image. It's going to remain stationary. Everything is going to be mashed to align to that. And this 1D file is just a text file with six columns showing the amount of discrepancy between each TR in the X, Y, and Z coordinates and also the roll pitch and yaw rotations away from that base reference image. Those are all concatenated together and output into this D file are all. So let's take a look at that really quick. So 1D plot, results, and what was it called? I already forgot. D file are all. Okay. 1D plot ft dot results file are all okay so you can see here this first three are the x y and z and then roll pitch and yaw so you can see we seem to have a spike right here and we'll take care of that later another thing to look at just after this full rake step this 1D tool dot pi instead of having six separate motions. It essentially collapses all of them into one file, and anything above a certain threshold we can then censor when we feed it into 3D deconvolve. So that's in this motion underscore subject enorm file. And let's take a look at that. I really do not have a good memory. I should write this down. Motion. It starts with motion. Okay. Okay, here's what it looks like, and if we wanted to see an even better plot, we could also do something like this, where if, say, we wanted to censor any voxels which had more than 0.3, so anything greater than 0.3, let's get rid of that. If we wanted to see what that looks like and about how many TRs it would do, we could do this command. Uh, this one option, 1D, and then... 450 ab 0.3. Okay, so here's what it looks like. So we'd have a couple volumes that would be censored in our 3D deconvolve command, which that's not bad. All right, so let's take an actual look at what these motion corrected volumes look like. So in this first controller up here, I have my T-shift image before any volume registration is done to it, and I'm also going to op open up this time series. Down here, open up another viewer, and this is going to be run one, but it's going to be the volume registered image. Sagittal. And open up graph. Okay. So on the top is before motion correction, bottom is after motion correction. So let's go to a specific voxel, jump to XYZ, and let's put in 2.8, 80.7, and negative 5.6. As you can see here is it seemed to mitigate the spikes somewhat, but notice that in some places the spikes seem to get a little bit better. So for example here, the spike that was here appeared to be relatively corrected for. Spikes actually appear in other directions as well, even after volume registration. The point is, we don't have any voxels which should be shifting that far outside of this 
at the image. It should be relatively stationary. That doesn't mean that all of the motion related activity has been totally corrected for. To mop up some of this variance, we can then insert those motion files into 3D Deconvolve. It'll try to see whether there's any correlation between the motion and between any of the regressors of motion. And if so, it'll try to remove those. So we can tease that apart from the signal that's actually due to our regressors of interest.